Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. 1 Chronicles chapter 14. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, along with cedar logs, stonemasons, and carpenters, to build a palace for him. And David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and that his kingdom had been highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. In Jerusalem, David took more wives and became the father of more sons and daughters. These are the names of the children born to him there, Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Eleplet, Nogla, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Beliida, and Elephelet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went out to meet them. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of God, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, Go, I will deliver them into your hands. So David and his men went up to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, God has broken out against my enemies by my hand. So that place was called Baal Perazim. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, and David gave orders to burn them in the fire. Once more, the Philistines raided the valley. So David inquired of God again, and God answered him, Do not go directly after them, but circle around them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move out to battle, because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army all of the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord made all the nations fear him. So we start this chapter with a fellow king from another location, Hiram, the king of Tyre, sent messengers to David. And he also sent him some cedar logs. He sent stonemasons and carpenters to build a palace for him. So this Hiram was essentially um, gifting David with a palace to be built in his honor. In verse 2, we read, David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and that his kingdom had been highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. So David gave all the credit to the Lord. He recognized that his calling was in service to the people of Israel and that the good things that were happening to him was for the sake of God's people Israel. But this Hiram king of Tyre became a very significant friend of David's, uh, really for the rest of David's life. And then later Hiram would assist Solomon with materials for the tabernacle of Solomon. In verse 3, we read that David took more wives and became the father of more sons and daughters. And so this group of names, a number of boys, a number of girls, these are the children that were born in Jerusalem. Most of them we never heard of again, but uh, Solomon, of course, is listed in this group. Solomon apparently was the fourth born son of David and Bathsheba. That's um, according to another genealogy we have in the scriptures, the order. And so Solomon is listed here as one of David's sons being born in in, uh, Jerusalem. In verse 8, When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went out to meet them. Now, this attack by the Philistines. Of course, David was the great general under King Saul that had repeatedly defeated the Philistines in virtually every encounter that he had from the time he was a teenager with Goliath and until the time that Saul died David was known as a mighty warrior, and the Philistines were afraid of David. So now that David is the king of Israel, they decided that they had to take matters into their own hands. They had to strike preemptively and and kill David. And so they came with all the army they could muster and went searching for David. So David's response is fascinating. This is um, a really interesting response, and um, I want to talk about it for a few minutes. But verse 10, we read, 
So David inquired of God, shall I go and attack the Philistines? That seems like a stupid question. At first glance, you know, David, who had um, been quick to run to the battle with Goliath, him inquiring if he should fight the Philistines who were searching Israel, trying to kill him, you know, just it, it seems almost improper on its face. But apparently this inquiry that David made of God was from the position of a more mature believer than he was at 17 years old. At 17 years old, he just was was ready to fight in the name of uh, Israel, in the name of the God of Israel. But here he inquired of God. He said, shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? And the Lord answered him, go, I will deliver them into your hands. And so this brings up a reminder that I want to uh, speak about another king of Israel, Josiah, who was a very good king of Judah much long after David, and uh, Josiah, as a very young man, decided he was going to go out and fight the Pharaoh of Egypt. And the Pharaoh of Egypt said, don't do it. This is not your battle. I'm not picking a fight with you. In fact, the Pharaoh of Egypt said, the Lord told me to go about the business that I'm about, and you have no uh, right to intervene and come attack me. But Josiah did it anyway, and apparently it was outside of the will of the Lord. And in so doing, Josiah lost his life to Pharaoh Necho. I refer to this as the Josiah principle. If you pick a fight that God has not authorized, the Lord may not defend you. And so in this case, David was looking for authorization from God. Shall I go and attack the Philistines? We have to assume that this was the pattern of David's life at this point. And so David and his men went up and defeated all of them strongly. And uh, the Philistines were routed to the point they abandoned all of their idols, and David gave orders to burn them in the fire. And then in verse 13, we don't know how much time has lapsed, but there's a separate attack. Once more, the Philistines raided the valley. And verse 14, so David inquired again, hence his pattern I was alluding to. And the Lord responded this time with an unusual strategy, do not go after them directly, but circle around them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move out to battle because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike down the Philistine army. And so the Lord was going to intervene on this battle supernaturally by causing something that sounded like troops marching in the tops of trees. The Lord said he was going to go out and intervene on this battle, in this battle, and strike down the Philistine army. So David did as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army. And uh, verse 17, the last verse, David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord made all of the nations fear him. Now, I want to just back up, because you and I, as believers, we need to inquire of God. Often we, we come up against a situation where we go, well, I know what to do here. But the Lord wants to be asked He just likes to be asked. You know, of course, he knows everything uh, that we need. Of course, he knows the future. Of course, he knows us very well. But he likes for us to inquire of him. And um, it's on us to inquire. When we fail to inquire of God, when we assume we know every situation we encounter and how to deal with it, we're setting ourselves up potentially for an ambush from the enemy. And so in David's case, this was a physical army. In our case, most of the time, it is a a spiritual ambush, but nevertheless, the principle remains the same. And so, Lord, we pray that we would be those like David who inquire of you when we feel like we're under attack as to how we should proceed. Lord, you're the master strategist. You're the one that sees the end from the beginning. You're the one that knows all the plans of the enemy. So, God, we pray that we would be in alignment with you and that you would go before us and go out and strike our enemies, our spiritual enemies, just like you did for David with the Philistines. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. And we thank you for this heavenly strategy. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net 
or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.